you go back a hundred years, things were built by hand, with handheld tools. The house you lived in, the products you produced. As the Industrial Revolution picked up speed, it got a lot more complicated. Factories got bigger, and so did cities. Everything built outwards, then upwards, then inwards, getting denser, bumping up against, intersecting with. So there had to be coordination and control, at first by hand, then mechanically then built in. Pretty soon you had to have standards. The rules of the road had to agree no matter where you drove. Communication systems had to interconnect. You wanted to take it for granted. Milwaukee could talk to Chicago. California could call New York. You didn't want to have to think about it. You wanted it to be simple, easy to do. But it was getting more and more complicated to keep it simple. The sheer number of things to be coordinated was increasing continuously. And so was the need for controlled technology. Different systems grew like vines. A different system for every service. Control and communication programs multiplied. Cost, complexity, consumption were barely in control. To make it all work, we needed a new generation of control technology. Smarter products, integrated factory automation, true intelligent buildings, all just over the horizon. In any operating building, there are several systems uh, that can and are usually in use. Uh, and in the past, we've not been able to, as designers and developers of equipment, to be able to make these systems work together in an integrated fashion. Many of our customers, especially in the factory floor situation, are trying to link together a variety of intelligent machines. As we add computers to a variety of machines, you need to link them together. The plant floor world is made up of a whole lot of devices. And it's important that those devices from various vendors be able to interoperate with one another. What we're cracking right now uh, is this question of uh, how do you build very large flat networks, uh, a lot of nodes communicating to each other. There are times when in fact these systems need to operate together. With the advent of electronic room control, the number of things we're sensing has gone up. Dynamic companies are constantly changing their workspaces. They're moving desks, they're moving tables, walls, and the associated wiring moves that go along with it are extremely costly. Whereas it might have been 800 points uh, a few years ago, that same building today might be 10,000 or more points, all interconnected with wire. Anytime you go in and you do surgery to a building, surgery to a factory, to lay cable, lay-in networks and so forth, you find that it really creates, it creates havoc within the organization and also tends to cost a great deal. Some of our customers have literally miles of wire in their factory trying to do all the remote I.O. And what I think is coming in the future is we're trying to get to wireless systems in one form or another to certainly minimize the amount of wire. The transmission of data hasn't always been as accurate as it needed to be or could have been or as timely as it needed to be. Someone might activate a motor in a shop. That sends a signal on the line, which in essence could block the signal command to activate a switch or a load. We see a vision where the user is not dependent on the environment for what the environment may deliver, but they have control as to the type of environment they may want to enjoy. It's already happening that people, when they select where to lease space, We'll take a look and see what the control technology is, and they'll say, well, look, I want to lease my, I'm going to put my law offices in a place where each partner can individually select the temperature in his room. We find that there's a growing need for simplification, a growing need for standardization, a growing need for technology that 
less trained people or easily trained people can deal with. In modern energy efficient buildings, some 40% of the total energy consumed is consumed by lighting. So what we have to do is to develop lighting energy management and uh, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning management systems in order to manage those loads in an intelligent way. There has been a need in many industries for some time. There's been a need for a better way to control things, for a lower cost, more reliable control technology. I knew that it had to do something very specific, very simple, but something that was universally needed, and it had to be very inexpensive. And then I found myself thinking, what if I could make a little gadget that costs about a dollar, maybe two bucks to make, and sells for around 10. And this little gadget could turn something on or off or in between, and it could sense whether something was on or off or in between, and it could communicate with any other device of its kind by way of any media, like twisted pair, RF, power line, whatever. The technology just wasn't quite ready yet. We could uh, see, though, an approaching window of opportunity in the technology. Um, just a few years ahead, we thought that there would be enough advances in computer technology, enough advances in communications, and enough advances in semiconductor technology to do the job. In essence, we, we saw a confluence of technologies coming together at a point in time that would give us all the elements that we needed to develop support uh, and design this new control technology platform. And we gave it a name. We called it Local Operating Network because that's what it did. And we called it LON, LON for short. And the core of this new platform had to be a component. It had to be a, a brand new kind of a system on a chip that could that would push the edge of semiconductor technology. The neuron chip would monitor sensors, control actuators, connect to transceivers, and send and receive information and instructions uh, over a network, back and forth, simultaneously. The idea, once you have it, like so many great ideas, seems so simple that it's almost inevitable. But the barriers to entry have been, in fact, enormous. Getting the lawn from a vision to a reality, making it real, has been an expensive undertaking. We'll spend somewhere around $50 million on the necessary marketing, research, and engineering. From the beginning, Echelon has had as its goal not simply the creation of a solution, but the creation of a set of tools with plenty of headroom so they could be adapted to multiple uses. Echelon is focused on the problem of creating a complete set of hardware and software, of standardized components, and an open protocol that could be used in many industries for different products by different companies. There were and are two advantages to this approach. First, it assures volume, and volume drives down cost, so components and therefore products become more and more reasonable, offering more and more price performance. Second, it creates a platform for interoperability. If you have the same standardized components and the same open protocol, used in different products and different systems, even if those products and systems are made by different companies, those products and systems share the potential to communicate and to cooperate, to work together. You have the potential in the future to have a world of cooperating products, systems, and environments. Think of a lawn as an orchestra, each smart node is like a musician with its own music or programming. 
communicating with the other musicians by the music, the system communications, relying on the conductor not for the next note, but as another peer in the orchestra providing tempo, volume, and configuration of the system. Each member of the orchestra can take the lead, if the music calls for it, communicating melody to the other musicians, smart nodes, in the orchestra. And just like each member of an orchestra, each smart node can recognize the others. They can communicate with each other and can share sense and control information. So they can all play together, or in the case of lawn-based products, work together. In a lawn works network, the number of smart nodes you can have cooperating in this way is more than 32,000. 32,000 points of sense and control. Of course, it will also work with just two points, two nodes. It is totally scalable, any size you need. Lines will fit inside a product like a dishwasher or a car or a computer. Bigger lines will work in systems like lighting or heating and air conditioning. And large lines or combinations of lines have the potential to create a new generation of more automatic factories, intelligent buildings, and smart homes. From the beginning, we set as a requirement that the Echelon tools must work for many industries. I want to be clear about Echelon's role in all this. It's not Echelon that will be making smart products or systems. Echelon's business is to support the companies that make these products and systems. Echelon's job is to do the research and to provide easy-to-use, low-cost enabling control technology in the form of tools and components that other companies can use. Echelon calls its family of tools and components LawnWorks. But before we introduce LawnWorks, we invite you to look over the horizon to see what the world will be like with lawns. Lawn technology, local operating networks, will have a great impact on many areas of product development and manufacturing for both business and home environments. The net effect of lawn technology, as you saw, will be to increase distributed intelligent control and to lower the cost of providing that control. More function, more efficiency, less cost. Echelon first researched and developed the basic technologies required for lawns. Now it has created the building blocks 
that make lawns practical. We call those building blocks Lawn Works. Lawn Works is a complete family of low-cost tools and components that will enable engineers and companies to design and implement the lawns. The lawns that will make possible a new generation of smart products, smart buildings, smart factories, and smart environments. LawnWorks supports local operating networks. It provides a new generation of intelligent distributed control. LawnWorks provides off-the-shelf software, hardware, and complete development tools. It begins with a new protocol developed in consultation with control companies in many industries. That protocol is called Lawn Talk. Lawn Talk provides the rules of the road for the next generation of control systems. It works transparently with virtually any communications medium. It allows the nodes on an operating network to communicate as peers with no centralized intelligence or server required. It guarantees that critical messages will be sent without delay. It prevents unauthorized use or tampering with control networks and nodes. And most important, Lanta creates a framework, a platform that in the future can allow the products of many companies, independently designed products, to work together, cooperating, as you just saw, for the benefit of the end user. Any Lawn Works based product will be able to communicate and potentially cooperate with any other Lawn Works based product. Lawn Talk is a complete protocol. It provides services selective, selectively at all seven layers of the International Standards Organization reference model for open systems. Lawn Talk is available equally to all companies in all industries everywhere in the world. Finally, and most importantly, Lanta can be efficiently implemented by a single low-cost chip, the Neuron chip. We've been talking a lot about the Neuron chip today because it is a new kind of chip, one that will be found at the heart of every smart node in every LawnWorks network. The Neuron provides a complete communicating system on a chip. Each neuron has three CPUs, so network communications can be managed automatically without slowing any sense and control functions. It has a flexible I.O. section to accommodate and simplify the interface to a wide variety of sensors, actuators, displays, and other devices. It has a communication subsystem specially designed to support Lawn Talk communications at a variety of data rates from 4,800 to one and a quarter million bits per second, and a complete memory subsystem, including static RAM, non-volatile double EEPROM, and depending on configuration, on-chip ROM, or the ability to connect to external memory and that memory can also contain the Neuron Chip firmware. This Neuron firmware makes the Neuron Chip unlike any other component to date. The firmware, in effect, gives the Neuron its own network operating system and manages all resources of the Neuron, the CPUs, I.O., and connection to the network. And, by the way, it does all of this in just 10K of onboard chip memory. But this memory means that each neuron chip arrives already pre-programmed to perform communications. The neuron chip comes in two versions. The neuron 3120 is a compact, single chip solution that can fit inside almost any product. The neuron 3150 supports external memory, and it is designed to handle more complex applications. Both Neuron chips are smaller than a postage stamp. Both provide new levels of size performance and price performance. The Neuron chip is sized and priced
to bring intelligence and communication capabilities to a whole new generation of smart products and systems. If the neuron chip is the engine of the smart node, the transceiver is what connects that engine's power to the local operating network. The LonWorks family of transceivers provides the electrical and physical connection from the neuron and its smart node to the communications media that carry LonTalk. The first LonWorks transceivers available will support three media, twisted pair, radio frequency, and power line. All of them are designed to lower installation costs by using less wire, wire already in place, or no wire at all. If wires are needed, the LonTalk twisted pair transceiver lets up to 64 nodes connect to a common twisted pair cable, even draw their power through that cable, and do it for distances of a mile or more. There are actually two twisted pair transceivers. The first transceiver supports a data rate of 78,000 bits per second. The second transceiver supports one and a quarter million bits per second. Using a common cable saves wire, saves time, saves materials, all of which ultimately lowers cost. With the power line transceiver, the PLC, you simply use wiring that's already in place, the AC power line that's found in factories, offices, and homes. Even though the power line with its harsh electrical environment is designed to carry power and not messages, the new LonWorks power line carrier transceiver will deliver reliable communications over normal AC power line and do it at high speeds, nearly 10,000 bits per second. So installing smart nodes on a LonWorks control network can be as simple as plugging them in. The LonWorks wireless RF transceiver is a compact, cost-effective solution that can operate from batteries. It provides a 5,000 bit per second data rate, a 50-foot range inside buildings, and more outside. LonWorks transceivers work transparently with each other because all messages, no matter which communications media are used, are in LonTalk. So a LonWorks network can be assembled from any combination of communications media served by any LonWorks transceivers. Powerline, RF, and twisted pair transceivers will first be available as evaluation modules that work in conjunction with the Lon Builder Developers Workbench. In effect, the Lon Builder Developers Workbench is the gateway to Lon technology, the first stop for all adopters. For that reason, Echelon made a special effort to make it very easy to use. The Lon Builder Developers Workbench streamlines and accelerates the development of Lon Workspace products to market. It is an integrated set of hardware and software tools that makes it easy to design and implement LonWorks networks. It allows you to start with the designing of individual nodes, then permits you to prototype those nodes, first alone, then in groups, constructing and modifying networks until you can have hundreds and thousands of nodes connected with different media all working together. The Lon Builder software runs on any PCAT compatible computer. It provides an object oriented development environment that allows developers to think about nodes in terms of what they do rather than how they do it. And it provides something called network variables. Those are variables that automatically implement communication by the appropriate nodes at the appropriate times, freeing the developer from communications programming. To make programming even easier, Echelon invented a new programming language called Neuron C. Neuron C makes every programmer an expert. You just focus on what you want to say and leave the rest to the network. The basic Lon Builder software includes many items that aren't available on traditional development systems, such as complete network monitoring and management tools, so network communications can be captured and analyzed, and nodes can be controlled no matter what medium they use. 
a project manager that automates the development process, a built-in debugger, and to support rapid prototyping and debugging, the Lawn Builder Development Station supports a range of processor boards for real-time emulation and debugging of neuron chip programs, I.O., and transceivers, all designed to work together with no interface problems. The LawnWorks family of tools and components each provides a different advantage. The heart of LawnWorks is, of course, the neuron chip and the opportunity it brings for all of us. I'd like to introduce the executives of the two companies, Motorola and Toshiba, who recognize that opportunity and who will be manufacturing the neuron chip and distributing it and the lawn builder throughout the world. Today, Motorola is here along with our strategic partners, Echelon and Toshiba, to announce an exciting new standard called Local Operating Network, or LAN. The first neuron chip numbered 143150 will be available in March of 1991. We expect it to sell for well under $10 in volume. As a service to our customers, we will also market the developmental and application tools, most of which were developed by Echelon. As we know from experience, high quality tools are key to setting new standards. And finally, this technology is so exciting, we believe we should be taking advantage of this newly forming standard ourselves. So inside Motorola, we've created a task force just for that very purpose. Network control technology will be an important growth area for the application of semiconductor chip in the 1990s. Toshiba believes that long, long works will be key to opening this vast new market. We expect initial volume pricing to be below $10 per new. We have already delivered the first silicon for insurance evaluation purpose this fall. We expect to be able to ship volume chip by mid-1991. Let me close by saying that Toshiba is committed to continue to work with Echelon and Motorola to ensure that the long works reaches its considerable potential and to see that long technologies Many benefits are well recognized, well used in the year to come. We've talked today a lot about the neuron chip. You've seen it looking pretty large on the big screen up here on stage. Well, here's how big it really is. And remember, too, that in the firmware of this small square of silicon also resides the entire Lontalk protocol. And now it's time to hear from the early adopters who have begun already the application of Echelon's LAN technology and the evaluation of the benefits of having a universal standard. The reason we would like to have a standard and open protocol and not a proprietary one from Fund Lighting is that as a matter of fact, we're not communications experts. We're lighting experts. And all the time and money that we have to spend on communicating or on protocols is, in my opinion, wasted. Well, they brought me one of these devices. <laughs> this, uh, this is one of our push buttons, which is a pilot device. And they put a neuron chip on there, and it, they didn't have to say very much. Uh, it just showed a chip strung out on a uh, network. and. That is a way that uh, future control systems are likely to look. My first reaction was that this is a beautiful concept. It really identifies all the pieces necessary to bring a solution to market. When one thinks of the uh, Echelon technology and the neuron chip, it brings to mind the ability to bring tremendous power and capability at very low cost in applications beyond what we ever dreamed of. The real contribution with what Echelon has done is by collapsing the whole system into one ship, making it so inexpensive that you can distribute them 
all around an application now, whereas we used to have to consolidate a more expensive computer in one place and wire it to all of the various functions to be controlled. Well, the main advantage of the LAN is the integration uh, into, a, uh, into a single device solution uh, of memory processor and communication, uh, those and, and protocol management. The way they've manifested or developed and uh, personified the product is that it has a little uh, onboard memory and you can uh, go in and actually give your device a personality by putting your own programming in there. They have committed that their devices will work in an environment with RF, with twisted pair, with power line carrier, and with fiber optic. So with this approach, you will be able to network various devices and not be limited to strictly one technology. Although it's very sophisticated in its own right, the people that can use it in their business do not need really highly skilled technicians in order to take advantage of that technology. And Echelon gives us a platform in enabling technology that will allow us to support the user's interests for more control in their office environment. That control element is the thing that will be making the difference to users of fluorescent lights in the future. The applications worldwide for the Echelon LAN system are almost unlimited. Just think, for example, in a large office building or a home, when the sun starts to come into a window, a sensor could very easily activate a window blind, closing the window blind, turning on the lights into the room to a preset level, uh, activating or increasing the air conditioning based on the ambient temperature in the room. All of this can be done very simply by these devices communicating to one another and letting each device know what has happened that has changed the environment in that room. The client really doesn't care whether these points are connected with wire or anything else. What he really wants is, to be, is the room to be 72 degrees. And we'd rather spend more energy making the room 72 and less energy and money connecting the points. Likewise, you get into a factory floor situation, you, they want to control the things out on the factory floor. They don't want to worry about the networking and the protocols and the communication. It'll all happen automatically with the neurons in the lawn. The one big advantage that Echelon has with lawns is that it is a complete concept. It deals with the protocol, the hardware, the software, the firmware, and the connectability issues that are necessary to create this new capability. Everyone else appears to address only a segment of that. There are other people uh, around the world who have talked about developing and implementing and making available protocol. Now, to date, we've not seen any of these. I think Echelon today has come out with a product that's real. Uh, we can actually see it and feel it and buy it and put it in our products. We see the incorporation of the LAN technology into OEM component parts that we will sell to lamp and lighting manufacturers for indoor and outdoor use, to air conditioner manufacturers, to manufacturers of stoves, dishwashers, refrigerators. Those are just current applications that we see. And it's our vision that the lawn system will actually establish the de facto standard in our industry for the low cost communications and control networks. They really have just begun to tap the ideas of what they're going to be able to do with this technology. This is the first step. But for a first step, it's a wonderful you know, new one to be taking. The long-term projections for the use of open protocols and the Echelon product in particular are staggering. If we can articulate the benefits that can be derived from integrated systems and from building signaling systems, then uh, the building industry, for one, will be enabled and empowered to develop products that that the world has really never seen before. We'll be able to do functions and features in a building uh, that, that we've just never been able to do. We've seen the ability for computers to grow and what that intelligence has put into our lives. Uh, just imagine what can happen by putting intelligence into switches, into receptacles, into machinery and equipment, allowing them to communicate with one another. The possibilities, I mean, one's mind just can't imagine what could take place. Once again, we can see it's the customer 
who's the innovator. And we expect it will be our customers, our adopters in many industries, who will show us all the different things you can do with the lawn. And I'm sure many of those are things we can't even imagine today. I do want to thank the leading companies already working with Echelon, who have shown such a willingness to explore this new enabling technology. Advanced Transformer, Allen Bradley, AMP, AT&T Consumer Products, Avalon Technology, Distribution Control Systems, Eastman Kodak, Helvar, IBM, Johnson Controls, Landis and Gear Powers, LEAX, Leviton Manufacturing, Lithonia Lighting, Sony, Steelcase, and Zeatech. There's been a lot of discussion, a lot of planning for other protocols and standards. Plans for different approaches for different industries. But this, this is here now. A revolutionary implementation of low-cost distributed control. And it works. It works for all industries and all applications. With today's introduction of LON technology, LON works, including the revolutionary neuron chip, the market has finally become available. A standard is available for implementing the first generation of communicating smart products. Today, we begin the journey toward low-cost, intelligent distributed control and the road that leads to an interoperable world with this small step. It's the first of many steps. LON technology is a technology with headroom, with the room to grow, and with the flexibility to let each of you make this technology your own. What we've shown you today is new and perhaps unfamiliar. But tomorrow, LON technology will not just be familiar, it will be simply essential. Thank you.